Do you have trouble falling asleep or staying asleep? Are you constantly feeling tired because you didn't sleep well? Is caffeine your go-to in the morning and throughout the day to keep going? And then maybe uh, a drink or a cigarette to come down after the day? Then you may be sabotaging your body's sleep and sleep quality. And that's the number one builder of resilience. I'm going to show you how you can make small changes that make a huge difference. Are you focused on how to thrive in today's crazy complex world, not just survive? If so, then please do uh, like, subscribe to this channel, hit the alarm so you know when videos are up. I'm Ravi Tangri, and I discovered long ago that the secret to complexity is not about making massive changes, but really about finding in this crazy complex system, what are the little pressure points where you would put a little bit of pressure in and everything changes. That's what I produce videos about to help you make those changes with those key leverage points. So please subscribe, like, and share this so we can pass the word about these Jedi mind tricks that make a huge impact. So today, what we're going to focus on are some simple lifestyle changes that you can make to shift your quality of sleep. And really, sleep is the number one builder of resilience. So it's going to have a huge, huge impact on you. Now, the interesting thing is these lifestyle changes that I'm going to talk about today will impact your sleep quality and so impact your resilience, but they all also hit your resilience and will have sort of a double effect in that way. And so this is what we're focusing on today during Better Sleep Week. Now, the Things we're going to cover are caffeine, smoking, alcohol, exercise, and what happens just before you sleep. Okay. So let's start with caffeine. For a lot of people, they need it to get going and throughout the day. And that's fine. I love a good dark roast or a really good latte, um, especially in the morning. Um, and that's fine. The thing is, if you keep using it, it can, for some people, cause jitters, anxiety, and what's most important here is insomnia. Now, the half-life of caffeine in your body, it'll vary by person, but it's probably about five or six hours. So that means in six hours, the amount of caffeine that you have in your body from the uh, double Americano you had, will have dropped by half. So half of it is still there running through your body. And six hours later, by another half, so a quarter of it will still be pumping through your body 12 hours later. So think about that. One of the things that I've found when I do workshops or strategic planning retreats now is that a lot of people will stop drinking coffee after lunch because they say it keeps them awake. So it's interesting that uh, we used to have coffee after dinner. Now it seems to have become really a, a morning drink for a lot of people. And if you can do that, and if you can keep it to the morning, it should have a significant impact on, uh, on your sleep quality. Okay. Now, Next, let's touch on smoking. I mean, there's all sorts of issues about the health of smoking. I'm not even going to touch on that. But uh, the interesting thing is that it can actually increase anxiety and stress and so impact your sleep quality. I found this really interesting when I learned this because a lot of people smoke to relax, but the counter is also true that it does increase anxiety and stress. So this is a pretty significant thing. If you are a smoker and you'd like to stop, 
there's a whole range of ways to do it. You have to figure out which will work best for you. And uh, there's all sorts of support out there if you want to do that. Okay. Now, the third thing that I want to touch on is alcohol. You know, a lot of people after a stressful day want to sit down with a highball or glass of wine and just let it go. And that's totally fine. But how many drinks do you have? The thing is too much can disrupt your sleep cycle and you wind up waking up really tired. You don't wake up refreshed. What I would suggest is to test what works for you. If you regularly have a couple of drinks in the evening, for a couple of weeks, change it to one and see what impact that has on your sleep cycle. I started out as a scientist, so I like to test and see and see what the feedback is and be able to sh show the impact. So just change this and see what impact it has for a couple of weeks on your sleep quality if you change it to one. If you have more than that, start bringing it down and notice what happens to your sleep quality as you step it down and see where is the optimal amount for you. Okay, so nothing wrong with having a glass of wine, but if it goes into the bottle, it's going to impact your, uh, your sleep quality uh, pretty significantly. The next one, of course, it's an obvious one, is exercise. Exercise has a huge impact on resilience directly, but it also really helps you uh, regulate your internal clock, the circadian rhythm that we talked about in the uh, first video in Better Sleep Week. And what you want to be able to do is when you're sleeping, you need the chemicals in your body to support that sleep. And one thing that can get in the way is high cortisol levels, especially when you're under stress. That gets can get produced a lot when you're under stress. So what exercise does, regular exercise, is it helps you regulate that cortisol so that you can lower it when it's time to sleep as you get to, to the nighttime. Because if, if it stays high through stress, it's going to make it really hard for you to sleep. And it will also disrupt your sleep quality. So the other benefit too, I mean, there's many of exercise, of course, it's going to reduce stress and uh, you're, you're going to be able to be much more productive, much more active. I've always found that when I invest time to exercise, we always say we don't have the time. But when I invest that hour a day, I get it back and more in increased productivity, increased focus, increased effectiveness. I, I'm way more productive. So it, again, it's counterintuitive. Making that time is an investment in you. Okay. Now, the third thing is in terms of a lifestyle change is having a cool down period before we sleep. A lot of people, because life can be stressful, end the day vegging out in front of the TV or just scrolling on the phone and, and then they go to sleep. The problem with that uh, is that that light disrupts your sleep cycle. It makes your body think it's still daytime. So your body keeps producing serotonin, does not ramp up melatonin production, which helps you get to sleep and stay asleep. So one key thing you can do is create about 60 to 90 minutes before you sleep where you are away from all your screens. No TV, no phone, no tablet, nothing. And you can have conversations, you know, th those things we used to do before all the tech came in. You can, uh, and conversations, I would suggest, um, you know, without the video, because again, there's a screen there, uh, conversations live with someone or with the phone up here so the light's not disrupting you. You can read, you can take a walk, you can have a nice hot bath, 
you can meditate all sorts of things you can do and then when you start to get drowsy it may not take that full 90 minutes but when you start to get drowsy that's your cycle saying it's time to sleep that's when you go to sleep so these are some simple lifestyle changes that you can make that will really increase your sleep quality and so increase your resilience your ability to deal with the challenges that you face today be a whole lot more effective what I would suggest is pick something that's easy for you. Start with that. Spend a few weeks on that. Then once that becomes a new habit, take another. Build that on. Don't try to do it all at once. Take it a step at a time because you've built your life building these habits that don't work for you. So invest the time to change it and really see what you can do to ramp up your resilience by changing how often are you up all night because your head's going nonstop, talking about things that make no sense or beating yourself up about things that you can't change anyway? How often do you second guess yourself? Again, beating yourself up because of stuff you did or didn't do or worrying about what's to come with this endless, endless head chatter. Some people even think that head chatter is who they are. It's not who you are. I've got some news for you. You can take control of that. What would you say if I told you I could show you how to turn that off just like that anytime you wanted so that you can step into presence, into mindfulness, and be able to have a decent, nice sleep without constantly having this going all the time? That's exactly what I can show you in a free course I've created. Just go to silenceselftalk.com, sign up, and it's my gift to you. This, to me, is the biggest barrier to uh, resilience. It's what wears down resilience. If you can shut that off, if you can quiet it down, you ramp up your resilience and you deepen your ability to be fully present in the things that you really want to experience in your life. Go to the site, sign up now, enjoy. Hi, I'm Ravi Tangri. Living and working in today's world, it's crazy complex. Fortunately, I learned how to navigate complexity in my first career as a nuclear physicist. I discovered it's not about doing all sorts of massive things and working hard. It's about finding those simple little pressure points where you put a little bit of effort in and everything shifts. And I've invested the last 30 years in finding what those pressure points are to thrive in this complex world. And that's what I produce videos about regularly. So if you want to see more, make sure that you subscribe Hi, I'm Ravi Tangri, and living, working, leading in today's world is incredibly complex. Now, I discovered how to navigate complexity in my first career as a nuclear physicist. And what I found the secret was, it's not about doing huge things or working incredibly hard. It's about finding those simple little pressure points where you put a little bit of effort in and the whole system shifts. And I've invested the last 30 years in finding what those pressure points are to be able to transform life and work so that you can thrive in this crazy, complex world. And that's what I produce videos about regularly. So please make sure you subscribe, hit the bell button so that you know when the new videos are up. And if you find these of value, please like, comment, share, so that we can pass this on to everybody who can use this.
Remember, if you want to see more of these videos that show you how to thrive in this crazy complex world that we're in, make sure that you subscribe, hit the bell so that you will be notified when the videos are up. And please like and share so that we can pass this on to everybody who can use this information.